let's talk a little bit about homeopathy. So okay. whenever I talk about homeopathy and I say, well, uh, there's no active ingredients. And in many countries, the packaging has to actually say cannot does not treat or cure any condition or disease, period. And you look at studies where you can comp compare homeopathy to placebo and there's uh, uh, it, it, it doesn't work. And people just get angry with me and they often will write to me and they'll say my uncle is a, a, a homeopath or I was successfully treated with homeopathy or whatever the case may be. I don't know if you agree with my position on homeopathy. I'll let you address yeah. that first. Uh, of course but I do. How 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 do you tackle those types of rebuttals from from folks about, well, yeah. With chiropractic stuff, I get a lot of the same types of emails. These can be yes. tough because there's a lot of emotional connection. Right. Yeah. And and that's not my forte. I'll say that right off the bat. I, I'm not, you know, if somebody has a really strong emotional bias there towards something, it's hard to penetrate. And that's not really my specialty. I like to make these larger, you know, this debunking content where I can go in and explain to you beyond a shadow of a doubt why homeopathy is pseudoscience. Now, some people are going to engage with that and some people are going to reject that. And that's just how the cookie crumbles. But um, I think that, you know, my strategy is to go in and say, OK, w why would you think that homeopathy would work? What is the mechanism by which this could work? And now let's compare that to what we actually know about the biological sciences, about the medical sciences. What is it for something to work? What is happening on the molecular level mechanistically mm. that would cause something to work and recognize that this has no chance of doing that? There's nothing in it. It's water or a sugar capsule or whatever it is. It cannot do anything. And homeopathy to me is the most incredible example of something something that's so blatantly pseudoscientific on face value. It's so indefensible and yet is penetrating even uh, certain areas of academia, you know, sort of these like low level trade universities that are ha offering programs in this stuff simply due to financial demand, right? Just if people are going to pay for the program, some institutions are going to offer it, you know, not Harvard Medical School, obviously, but some place is going to do it. And then that that really feel it's a vicious cycle now because people then can point at these things and see there's validity to it. And there's, no, there 100 percent is not. So <laughs> we, homeopathy seems a little easier to deal with than yep. than chiropractic in my mind. And I think the one of the tough things about chiropractic is there is this kind of blend where some of the I've never had it done, but some of the adjustments probably feel good at least in the short term. Maybe there's an endorphin release. There's there's maybe a stretching component. There might be something that's more akin to like massage that 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 is good. But then you have all of the supposed uses and right. treatments and the mechanism of subluxation of the spine through which it supposedly works and this type of thing. Yeah. Chi chiropractic is a very tough one because there's so much so much there. Yeah, it is tough because I don't think that chiropractic is a sham field uh, at face value. I think that there is there can be something to spinal adjustment and it, it's 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 fine that that there are chiropractors and there's something to it. But the problem is it, it blends so easily into pseudoscience, largely because you have these, I mean, narcissists, essentially, who <clears throat> they're not trained doctors, right? To become a chiropractor, you're not going through the same educational path as someone who's becoming like a medical doctor or a surgeon or something like that. So they they definitely know know less about things that are outside of their expertise. And then but then you have people that go on the internet and say, I'm a doctor and here's some stuff that's totally unrelated to chiropractics about nutrition or yes. something like that. And you should listen to me because I'm an authority. And people really fall for it, especially if it has that anti establishment bite to it. This is what pharma doesn't want you to know or it's set, you know, these kinds of uh, ways of thinking.